For my video, I interviewed Troy Wesson. Troy is a student here at the University of Northwestern, but he grew up in Honduras. He was actually educated throughout his entire grade school years all the way through high school. He didn't come over to the U.S. until 2012, right before coming to college here. I asked Troy to describe a typical day of education in Honduras, and he actually uh, said that it was uh, very, fairly similar to an education system that we would find here and at Northwestern, but also in some grade schools in Minnesota. So he told me that uh, there are there's always one professor with many students. Um, in fact, the classes were rarely larger than 20 or so people, so that the professor could actually do some fairly intentional work. He said that it was very much on the system of class participation that the professor would lecture and have uh, <clears throat> the students participate in any way that they could, depending on the, the course. But if ever a student needed help or uh, would, wanted to ask a question and raise their hand or anything like that, then they could feel free to do so. They would feel free to do so by just raising their hand and uh, the, the professor would call on them readily. Uh, a couple of differences that you would find in the classroom setting. Uh, I asked Troy about fine arts and extracurricular activities. He told me that there, you would actually rarely find any fine arts uh, taught in the education system. That there wasn't choir and instruments and things like that was not very popular and it was not focused on in Honduras. Extracurricular activities often focused on uh, were sports related but even then Soccer was the main sport, and you'd rarely find other sports of much interest in Honduras. One notable uh, aspect about the education that Troy uh, had while well in Honduras, their, their classes were structured very uh, particularly in that each year they would know the students would know exactly what classes they were going to be taking and exactly when they would have to take them. If ever they were to fail, the students would have to take a summer course. And if they failed again the summer course, then they would have to take the entire grade school year over again. <clears throat> Troy explained to me a little bit about the transition that from high school to college, and he just claimed that there was no... Uh, extraordinary transition other than just having to go to college and it's a heavier load and whatnot. Troy prefers spontaneous teaching uh, where teachers make you think but also it's, it's applied and uh, he said he learns best by hearing and, and not by taking notes. That is a personal preference but I think the one thing that is really important that he noted was just that when when teachers make you think and they, uh, they make you uh, want to be involved and it's their lectures are appealing and whatnot, uh, students will more readily uh, be engaged.